Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to our today's webinars, where we're going to look at the intelligent network monitoring and visibility and why it matters. My name is Philip Cherny. I'm the product marketing manager at Progress, focusing on the Flowmon solution, which we're going to be talking today about. Today with me here is Martin Škoda. Martin is our product manager focused on our security part of our solution, Flowmon. Hi, Martin. Hello, everyone. Hi, Philip. Okay, so uh, before we start, little housekeeping rules. Um, you should see on your right side on the panel a uh, question mark icon, so you can post your questions throughout the webinar anytime. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible throughout the webinars, or alternatively, there will be a time for Q&A at the end as well. So um, feel free to ask as many questions as possible. And let's start. So allow me to share the screen. And and let's go. Okay. So before we dive into uh, into the webinar, I just wanted to share a little bit of news or at least talk about the current state. So. I guess it's no surprise uh, for everyone that uh, any number of companies throughout the past year or past years have been uh, victims to some sort of cyber attacks, uh, typically a ransomware. We can see, for example, companies like uh, Xenia or uh, Mercedes. And uh, I think that everyone can sort of imagine the impact it can have on the, on the company when they fall victim to, for example, ransomware in the attack. Your files are encrypted or what's worse, they can be published online so your competitors or anyone uh, who find them relevant can use them. And uh, it's generally a negative, uh, negative message to be sending out throughout the world that you've fallen victim. So today, security is now important more than ever. Uh, if you look at some other supporting statistics, uh, the average uh, the average length to identify a data breach in 2022 was 207 days, and then it took another 70 days to contain a breach. So that's a pretty long time. If you look at it from a calendar perspective, uh, if a breach occurred on January 1st at the beginning of the year, it would take until October 4th to, of that year to fully identify and, and contain the breach. So it's uh, really a long time. So companies now need to be aware of any breach and they need to be able to react much faster than to rely on, let's say, a signature approach. Uh, 2048 is the number of ransomware complaints from January uh, 2021 in the first six months of the year. And this report by FBI shows that uh, it was a 62% year over year increase in the ransomware complaints. And together uh, for the last year, more than a third of uh, well, 37% of the global organizations said they were a victim of some sort of some form of a ransomware attack in last year. So um, I, th I think it's pretty clear threat actors are getting smarter. They have tools available now. They can, you know, anyone can now go on the dark web and download a ransomware as a service and attack any organizations. So being prepared, has a sort, some sort of security strategy in place is definitely uh, important. So if you look at it from the side of IT operations and what sort of challenges they face, well, it's a number of things. It, you need to be focused on root cause analysis. You need to be uh, capable of quickly troubleshooting as well as monitor your critical applications if it's on-premise or if it's in cloud or you might have a hybrid infrastructure, you need to monitor that uh, traffic and those services as well. With that, you need to also have time and some solution in place to analyze the traffic. And uh, that also overlaps into security because once you analyze the traffic, you might, uh, you might be able to spot some sort of anomalies 
and they, they, those are usually some early incident of compromise. So generally, you need a complete network coverage to ensure that your business is going to be secure and that no network operations or your, generally your business operations are going to be interrupted. Uh, while talking about the security, uh, there is definitely this overlap. And I like this statement by Gartner because what we see among our customers and what sort of this Gartner message uh, confirms is that network operations teams and sec security operations teams are uh, divided. They are siloed. They often uh, duplicate the effort and waste money. And because of the tools that uh, share many of the same instrumental points and some of the same use cases, that's the reasons for the waste of the money. But what we also find when we talk to our customers is that uh, usually there is a typical blame game where uh, each team first needs to prove that it's really their responsibility to deal with some sort of issue before they start dealing with it. So that's a definitely a problem and one that might be solved. Let's, let's see how. But before we jump into that, uh, another point that I wanted to stretch is when talking about the importance of network visibility and network monitoring is the seeing where is the security gap. So the traditional approach still is to sort of uh, protect your perimeter and protect your endpoints. So usually you have some sort of firewall, firewall or next generation firewall at the edge and you have uh, some sort of anti-malware, antivirus, or ADR solution at endpoint. But that's uh, pretty great, but nowadays it's not enough. So we still are left with the question, who is watching the network? And watching the network is really important because it provides the single sort of source of truth for all communications. It gives the IT operations the broad visibility to see exactly who is talking to who, how long, usage with protocol, etc. It fully works with encrypted traffic and you can also uh, track uh, behavior of each user and create a baseline and distinguish of uh, a normal behavior in the network and abnormal behavior. And with that information, you can then quickly and easily automate some detection and response. So uh, that brings us to our solution, which is called Flowmon. And this is actually uh, what we bring to the market and what is our key value. So uh, it comes from twofold. So on one side, we help network operations teams with uh, network performance monitoring and diagnostics tools, allowing them to monitor the end user experience, uh, troubleshoot any uh, network related issues and uh, provide forensic analysis, uh, provide forecasting and capacity planning for the future investments and as well monitor your infrastructure whether it is on cloud or on premise on the other side for the security teams well as i mentioned we, we can distinguish what's normal and what's abnormal behavior in the network and that can provide an uh, early detection for threats like uh, unknown threats insider threats ransomware analysis of, of encrypted traffic and generally provide the network behavior analytics. And all that information essentially, we like to say, erases that silos between SecOps and NetOps teams and uh, can bring them together using one solution. So uh, the great value with the, uh, with the network operation side is that you can exactly see the full traffic, who's talking to who, how long, using which protocol, and uh, it gives you this sort of eyes into the network. You can also monitor a performance degradation, so for your critical applications, or basically have the answer to everlasting questions for network admins, which is, where is the problem? Is it the network? Is it the server? Is it the application? Where is the problem? You need to quickly find out, and I think the last time I read one of the reports also said that more than 80% of the uh, time and resources is actually spent on 
where is the problem than actually solving it. So it's also a pretty critical information to have. And as well, you can monitor your availability, usage capacity, and reveal bottlenecks, analyze errors, and automate detection. Uh, the great value from the security side is the network detection and response capabilities. So you can automatically, without the need of manually sift through the data, you can be automatically alerted if there is a potential anomaly. You can leverage the context-rich information provided by the solution so you know exactly who is the attacker, what sort of anomaly it is, if there are any files that were compromised, etc. And thanks to the uh, power engine that leverages machine learning and artificial intelligence, the great value is that it doesn't rely on signatures. So it's pretty great for spotting zero day attacks. And it's a real time detection and providing the information for a remedial action. Uh, so if you look uh, pretty simply how the network detection and response solution works, well, it's easily explained in these three steps. So first, we need to input the data. We can work with uh, any network telemetry. We can leverage reputational feeds and IDS signature and uh, also collect full packet data as well, if necessary, and provide analysis. Uh, once we have this sort of data, we can then run our number of different algorithms that combines different approaches, how to distinguish what's normal and what's abnormal. So that can be machine learning, adaptive based learning, user behavior analysis, heuristics, and also leverage reputation data and signatures. Uh, signatures is here just a complementary of additional data. We'll look at that uh, in our demo use cases at the end. Uh, at the second part of our webinar. And once we run our uh, algorithms and our analytics, we can provide uh, results in form of events where you can see relevant telemetry, you can see forensic capture data and analytics, CUEF references, based on which you can then automate your response. So if you look at an example of number of uh, scenarios or anomalies that can be detected by uh, this solution, it can be, you know, attacks like port scanning or dictionary attack where someone is trying to break the password. It can be a number of traffic anomalies, for example, and the, by the, with DHCP or DNS, ICMP, a uh, typical example can be man in the middle attack where an infected station will be broadcasting everyone in the network that they're the gateway to the internet, uh, internet, giving them access to your traffic and maybe to your uh, uh, private data, like uh, banking password, for example. But it can be also uh, operational problems like delays or unresponsive service, broken updates. It can be, you know, number of different viruses, malware, ransomware, crypto mining, crypto mining, etc., or unknown, uh, unwanted applications. For example, you know, you probably don't want in your uh, corporate environment to see a Tor network and someone did uh, anybody downloading. Uh, computer games or movies using Tor. So that sort of anomalies also can be uh, alerted or enforced by our solution. And lastly, it can be also uh, anomalies in a device behavior, typically, for example, a long-term long uh, change in the behavior. Uh, one of the customers that we've uh, deployed our solution to have found out a suspicious upload of a large amount of data to the public repository system. And then by, uh, with the further investigation, we found out that it was an employee in the termination, termination notice who wanted to uh, take the company's data to use them in his further employment, for example, working for a competition. So potentially in the beginning, this might seem as a typical uh, networking anomaly with a suspicious upload, but it also has an overlap into security, it's, which presents a pretty uh, important security breach. So the whole solution is, uh, is uh, it's working for hybrid network, uh, for hybrid environments. So whether your infrastructure is on-premise 
or on a cloud or the combination of both, you can uh, provide the visibility and automatic threat detection using our solution. So uh, if we look at it from the left side, we can actually leverage the fl native flow logs by uh, Google Cloud, AWS, and Azure by those providers and leverage those data to send it to our collector for deeper analysis. And if that option is not possible, we can deploy uh, our own sensors, which is called Flowman Probe, to take full copy of the data and, uh, and uh, generate the NetFlow, NetFlow IP fixed data to analyze, it, uh, analyze the statistics. And on the, on the right side, we can see that we can leverage the network traffic from your current infrastructures, from, so from your routers, switches, if they can generate any type of NetFlow, JFlow, SFlow, uh, IP fixed format, we can work with all of them, just send it to our collector and, uh, and we can analyze the data. Philips, Philip, sorry for interruption. I think, uh, can, you, can you please uh, start sharing your screen again? The slides are not full screen, I'd say. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, I see that there was some sort of problem. Allow me to share the screen one more time. Uh, let's see if we can go. Yeah, is that better? Yes, thank you. Super. Yeah. Okay. Apologies for the interruption. So just to follow up, uh, if we can leverage the uh, network telemetry data from your current infrastructure, if not possible, we can deploy our own sensors on the on-premise scenario as well. So if we look at the uh, sort of architecture and how the flow, uh, flow on solution works, we can we need the source of the data. We, the whole solution leverages the NetFlow IP fixed data or any standard. We can get the data from cloud, router switches, or with our uh, other products in our progress portfolio. So this is a load master, which is a load balancer that can also uh, generate IP fixed data, or we can leverage our own probes. And there is an added value where we can enrich the NetFlow statistics with application layer information, giving you even deeper visibility for more effective troubleshootings. Uh, once we have the network telemetry data, we can send it to Flowmon Collector. This is an appliance. It can be hardware, virtual. And uh, on the collector, you just run the user interface with the centralized dashboards and reports, networks uh, detection and response point of view, where you can see the anomalies and uh, potential events and early incidents of compromise. And you can also see the network visibility and troubleshooting dashboards when you can do the deep drawdown analysis, troubleshootings, monitor the top talkers, et cetera. Uh, I just wanted to also mention the great value uh, is providing the network performance monitoring. So usually uh, I think it's pretty important to sort of distinguish when we talk about network performance monitoring, we mean uh, that we can monitor delays introduced by the network, which is typically a round trip time, or delays introduced by a server. So basically answering the questions, how long does it, take, does it take to server to process the bucket and respond? How long does it take to transfer it over the network? What are the delays? Is there any jitters, etc.? So this provides valuable information for the uh, uh, network operations teams to distinguish or at least start to triage and focus on the problem uh, if it's in the network, if it's in the server, etc. So uh, that was uh, for the slides, but uh, we're just going to see everything I just talked about in the live demo demonstration shown by Martin. So Martin, uh, the floor is yours. You can take over the screen. Um, Thank you. I will do that. Uh, we have several questions. So should we answer yeah. it right now or should we uh, go to demo? I'll try to answer uh, during your demonstrations and All right. we can answer at the end. Okay. In that case, I'll start uh, presenting the demonstration. Right. So uh, what I will show you today is a couple of use cases. Uh, some of them are operational, uh, some of them are security. Um, 
it's all available in our demo flow mon uh, that is publicly available so if you want to try it by yourself you are free to do so uh, first of all i will just show you uh, the dashboard uh, that just provides uh, various information that are important for you. It's fully customizable, contains several widgets uh, or multiple widgets. Uh, you can see here some overall statuses of the network application and security. And then we have several other uh, like dashboards that are security related or network related, or we can <clears throat> also see some um, like application performance of our, uh, for example, eShops or databases. We can see uh, the network uh, topology visualization uh, and also see some bandwidth utilization. Um, this is just a like traditional dashboard that you can see uh, and from which uh, if you encounter or see any issue, you can go into the details into uh, analytical tools, uh, which I will use to show you some use cases. So first of all, monitoring center, uh, this, uh, this is used for the analysis of the flow data that we collect on our collectors. Uh, it can be, as mentioned, flow data from various exporters like switches, routers, but also our flow on probes. And today I will show you uh, the benefits of having our Flowman probes, so our IP fix exporters, because they provide much higher uh, visibility into the network traffic. So first of all, uh, we will we will check what are the server response times of our servers. So in this uh, chart, you can see that we have a traffic. Uh, traffic chart uh, that includes the traffic from the headquarters, uh, our branch offices, and uh, load, load balancer uh, from the load master. We can see the server response time within the within the chart, uh, which might indicate some peaks that might be interesting for us. But it can be a slightly aggregated data, so I will uh, look into the details. Before that, uh, what is server response time? Probably it's a uh, it's clear, but it's the total amount of time that it takes a server to respond to a client request. And why we would want to watch it, uh, high server response time can indicate some problems with the servers or applications that are running on the server. So if the server response time increases, it usually causes uh, customer frustration and productivity of employees, uh, and it can result in financial losses. So with the Flowmon and monitoring of this metric, uh, you can minimize such risks. And we will see uh, how easily we can check uh, check the <clears throat> uh, server response time. So I will just input a filter that I copied. Uh, and uh, I will aggregate uh, the output using the average server response time uh, field. Once I click on process, it starts processing and will show us the table of flows and which we, in which I can see that there are uh, some servers within our internal network that take over 35 seconds to respond. So this is something that as a network admin, I would consequently uh, like uh, check. I, will, I would uh, uh, run a server diagnostic to find out what is the issue. It can be just some malfunction hardware or something more severe. This is something that I uh, did manually, but we can uh, set up some reports so I can get reported uh, what is the average response time for previous day, for example, or I can set up some alerts so I don't need to check this, uh, check this, uh, and I will be just alerted when the, this metric uh, degradates. All right, so that was the network performance metric, uh, server response time, and now let's check uh, uh, let's uh, check the TLS uh, use case. So as I mentioned, our probes provide visibility into application layers pro protocols, which also includes the TLS, and uh, uh, probably some, uh, all of you know, but the TLS is a cryptographic protocol that is used to secure communication over a computer network, and there are several versions of it. Um, 
some of them are not secure anymore, uh, 1.0, 1.1, uh, and some of them are considered as secure nowadays, so 1.2 and 1.3. And we can easily check uh, what uh, versions are uh, used in our computer network, and if there are some vulnerable versions, we should check it because it can uh, represent some risk to our company. Uh, so I will just do a really quick uh, statistics uh, that is based on TLS server version. Uh, click on proceed. And yeah, I would I would uh, also filter out by check only the HTTPS traffic. Um, and as, I, as as we can see, uh, there is actually some TLS1 traffic. If I want to go into more details, it's pretty simple. I can turn down to flow level. So I get from this statistic uh, to the level of individual flows. I can filter out many, many flows. Uh, this is just A20. Uh, and or I can use a different filter to just filter out what uh, filter out the servers in our uh, company network that are using such uh, such uh, protocols. And I will do one more thing. I will just change the output of the table, which is uh, customiz customizable. And now I can see the results I wanted to show you. So there are some uh, some uh, communications where the client and server uses the TLS 1.0 uh, version that is not uh, that is not uh, secure anymore. So this is something that also should be checked. While, while we are at the TLS, we can easily also check um, if there are some uh, if there are some um, uh, certificates that are uh, no longer valid. So as, as the network infrastructure grows, uh, many teams can take care of um, hundreds of servers and applications. And it, sometimes it can be troublesome to uh, manage uh, such uh, uh, so many so many servers and maintain the TLS certificates in such dynamically growing infrastructure. So we can very easily check if some uh, of uh, company public services use uh, the TLS certificate certificate that uh, is expired. So for that, we can filter the output using the validity to field. And I will once again switch to the output. So I can see the information uh, about the TLS certificate validity. We can see that there are plenty of uh, certificates that are not valid. Some of them are not uh, the services in our network. It could be filtered out uh, to just see our uh, network services, uh, sorry, network, uh, our, our servers and our uh, services to easily see that. All right, so that's uh, the TLS. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, um, it's it, this information comes from our performance probes, uh, so, uh, without our probes, this information are not typically available in the product. Um, but yeah, you can still use the Flowmon for many use cases like bandwidth utilization, monitoring, uh, seeing top talkers, uh, and seeing some um, malicious communications uh, mm -hmm. with just the standard flow data. So generally, if I can interrupt, I would just I would just say that you know if you have a, a basic starting project, you can just leverage the Flowmon collector. As your budget increase, you can always go for the Flowmon probes to provide the additional value as well. True. All right. So uh, these were the operational uh, use cases. There are plenty more, but we could uh, we could have hours of. Uh, use case demonstrations but now let's uh, let's go to the security use case uh, so i will show you how uh, we leverage the adaptive based learning heuristic machine learning reputation databases and other approaches to detect suspicious behavior uh, which can for example 
indicate malware infection and we can uh, basically see how some offender tries to spread and exfiltrate uh, spread uh, across the network and exfiltrate the company data so for this demonstration uh, let's say we got a report that one of the hosts is trying to uh, communicate with the known botnet c2 server uh, i know that the ip address is uh, dot one dot fifty. Uh, so I can also see in the dashboard that it's like top one uh, IP address by even count. So I will just copy that uh, and get to the ADS. Here I just prefiltered pre the time period uh, when the event was reported. Uh, I filtered the output uh, using the IP address, and I can see that there are actually more. Uh, detected events that just uh, blacklist communication. So I can select them all and I can start with the investigation. I will check uh, the view, uh, the aggregated view, so I can see uh, how uh, the offender, um, like what were, the, what were his activities during the time. So uh, the blacklist communication uh, was actually um, detected uh, after some other some other incidents or anomalies were detected so i can check uh, them chronologically so if i filter the events and chronologically from top to bottom i can see that the offender uh, started to uh, scan the network uh, probably in order to discover some remote services such as network drives uh, which uh, then uh, the offender attacked so we can see after the scan uh, there are several dictionary attacks uh, using uh, using the samba and rdp protocol so the offender is trying to guess the password to get to the available network drives um, the activity of the offender is also detected uh, detected by general method that alerts on outliers in uh, outliers of the communication <clears throat> patterns. Let's say so we can see detection of various communication and various ports. After that, we see that the offender uh, communicated with the blacklisted uh, known botnet C2 server. And after that, there were some anomalies in the ACMP traffic, <clears throat> basically high uh, high number, number of uh, pings with large pay payloads. And such activity was also detected as a large upload outside the company network. And the last thing we see is uh, the um, behavior pattern detection that basically tell us that there were some suspicious uh, behavior pattern detected uh, that belongs to the offender. Okay, so this is the the uh, the, uh, the events chronologically. Uh, now we can see uh, we can see that there was basically some hosts that scanned the network, uh, try to access our network uh, network drives. Uh, then communicated with the blacklisted server, uh, exfiltrated some data, uh, and probably probably some also did some encryption. How do I know that? Well, uh, if I check the ICMP anomaly, for example, the, with the large payload, uh, I can actually see that uh, the offender sent many many packets with payload that is uh, that is larger than, than it's usual. I can see it in this even detail. And in this even detail, I can also see uh, some information like the user identity, of course, what a miter attack tactic and technique it, it, uh, it uh, like is mapped to. And beside that, uh, I can also see the traffic record. So I can actually look into, uh, look into the packets uh i'm not sure if you can see what i'm to share i'm sharing yeah the screen is still sharing martin uh can you see the wireshark i guess not. no 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 we have the event 
in the flow one demo yeah so yeah. from the from the uh, even detail uh, I just downloaded the pcap files so we uh, based on the detection we uh, capture the traffic uh, capture the packets uh, so yeah. we are not now we are not talking about flow data now we are talking about packets so we have the payload and then we can uh, check the uh, check the we can check the var shark mm -hmm. uh, and see what is in the data so in this case uh, mm -hmm. i can see that in the uh, icmp was used to exfiltrate some text it could be some passwords it could be some com some other sensitive company data uh, and yeah so this is how we can uh, also mm -hmm. analyze the packets based on the and this is another, yeah. And this is another great value provided with uh, by our Flowman probe because we probes takes the full copy of the traffic, full packets, and then generate the net flow data. So with the probes, we are actually capable of doing the packet capture. Yes, correct. That is correct. What I want to also show you that uh, our our approach is. Uh, not based on signatures. Uh, it's based on the uh, algorithms I uh, mentioned and Philip mentioned previously. It uh, will not tell you that uh, this incident or this event is some specific vulnerability. It just shows you the indicators of compromise. It shows you that something is uh, something is wrong. The anomalies, uh, but we uh, complement our approach with the. Uh, with the IDS uh, events, and uh, you can also see it here. So if we if you open the event that was the, that is detected in the ADS, you can also see uh, related IDS events. These events are based on the on the signatures. Uh, this is based on uh, IDS Ricata, which exports, uh, which basically analyzes the packets and exports the events to the IDS, where we put them together with our events so we can get some additional information uh, from this. Uh, okay, last thing I want to mention is uh, the B pattern, because it's something that is uh, interesting for our customers. Uh, B patterns, it's similar to a blacklist in the sense that uh, it's maintained by Flowmon. Uh, we extend uh, the, the set of B patterns. We basically use it to define what behavior is malicious and should be detected. Uh, we create the B pattern and uh, distribute it to our customers, same as the blacklists. So our, our customers can uh, get uh, detections for the current and emerging threats uh, for which we create the B patterns. Uh, so this is the sample uh, example of the B pattern that uh, in, can indicate uh, ransomware activity because ransomware usually downloads the data from the network drive encrypts it and uploads it so we are comparing the amount of uh, downloaded and uploaded data uh, and uh, yeah uh, this b pattern can indicate uh, that something like ransomware is uh, is uh, in your network so these are the b patterns and um, maybe everything that i wanted to show so we can get to the questions Super, Martin, thank you. We've got a couple of questions, but uh, there was a question if you could show anomaly detection systems without IP filter for 24 hours. So maybe... Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I will okay. get back to sharing. Super. Okay. So, so, yeah, super. All right, so this is how it looks like. Uh, for last 24 hours, uh, what you see is based on perspective. Uh, perspectives, it's customizable. So uh, basically, there are some def defaults, but uh, you can customize it. You, and you basically define what detection method and sub method for which part of the network has uh, critical priority, high priority, uh, or basically you can customize uh, 
what you will see uh, and with uh, with uh, how high uh, priority. So mm -hmm. this is uh, this is something that is fully customizable because sometimes blacklisted communication can be for uh, can be critical, but some upload might not be as critical. So what you see is uh, is like customizable based on what are your preferences. Here you can filter uh, filter. Um, uh, the output so you can focus on the information that you need and you can drill down to from from the chart to the level of individual events mm -hmm. to the level of event detail super thank you martin all right i think that answered the question uh, we've got another one. Is this product put in the middle and traffic routed it through, or is it using port mirroring? So... It, it uh, yeah, it uses port mirroring. It's not uh, the traffic is not flowing through. We we just need to get uh, <clears throat> a copy of the traffic, and from the copy of the traffic, we uh, we create the flow data that are used to uh, that that are sent to collector. So mm -hmm. so. If if the system uh, if this system should fail, uh, the network is not impacted. Mm -hmm. Super. Uh, we've got a couple of easier easier questions which I can answer quickly. Uh, can we get the slide uh, slideshow sent to us? Uh, yes. Uh, after the webinar finishes, you will receive a link to the recording to the to this to the whole webinar, so you will automatically receive it. And. Another question is how how deep is the history kept? Who is talking to whom, etc. So uh, it depends to the size of our collector, and uh, the sizes ranges for from 500 gigabytes to 192 terabytes. So it really depends how much historical data do you want to keep, and we have the capability of providing. So it can be weeks, it can be months, or even years. And we support a distributed architecture, so you can essentially stack the collectors onto each other together. Yeah. Uh, so, if we are talking about the flow data, there is like uh, one to five hundred reduction of the data. Uh, if we are talking about our IP fix uh, export from our probes, it's uh, it's like one to 200, one to 100. It really depends on what application layer protocols you want to monitor. But uh, we have customers that are, that are that have like six month history, uh, but it can be much longer depends on the depends on the collector size. Yeah, and as as I as Philip mentioned, we can go we can go with distributed architecture, where you just put multiple multiple co co uh, collectors that are used for both processing and storing the flow data. So the history is very very long. Mm -hmm. Super. Uh, we've got another questions. At what network speeds is the probe able to perform capture? Is there any sampling in place? How do you save the captured data? So our probe uh, network capture uh, is intended uh, for like uh, on-demand packet capture when flow is not enough. You need to go to the packet. Uh, you basically uh, do the capture with some filter to fill uh, to capture to capture just some portion of the traffic. You don't want to capture all the traffic. Uh, the limit, I think it's uh, sl slightly, le slightly less than one, one megabit. And uh, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. for, and for the ADS, usually it's not, uh, not, a pro not a problem because uh, when we detect the event, we have like those information for the filter. So for example, uh, the ICMP anomaly, we just uh, triggered the traffic and captured the ICMP, ICMP traffic, which is not not uh, not large amount of, tra of traffic. Mm -hmm. You've got another questions. Is there a way to get packet loss data? Uh, we have uh, we have uh, in the in the network uh, network performance um, metrics. We have multiple met, uh, multiple like metrics. So besides server response time that I showed you, there is a round trip time that 
tell us what is uh, what is the performance of network. There is also out of order packets and uh, most importantly for this question, retransmissions that basically tell us that the packet needs, needed to be retransmitted uh, because it it got lost in the way. So yeah, there is a way how to how you can uh, uh, know that uh, packets are being closed because you will see a uh, high number of retransmissions. Mm -hmm. Another questions we have is, can your collectors uh, take standard data from a non-flow mode sensors, i.e. Yes, for yes. or VMware? So, yes. Yes, yes we can. Um, uh, we can we support NetFlow version 5, 9, SFlow, uh, JFlow, Many 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 flow standards. We can we also support some of the uh, other vendor extensions. So, for example, Gigamon and Ixia can also export HTTP information in the flow data, and that is also support supported. <clears throat> and with the upcoming ma major major version of the Flowmon 13, we will be able to easily support basically any any flow. Mm -hmm. Uh, any flow extensions. Super. Uh, we have a question to show something in the demo. Can we see anomaly detection system, the SMTP anomaly method, spam client? Uh, how can you see it when the communications between client and server is encrypted? So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we... <clears throat> sorry. Um... So we can see, uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly right now how we uh, get the information about the email, uh, how many emails is, uh, how many emails is sent, is being sent. Uh, if that information is depending on the SMTP information itself, like from the layer seven, or if it based on some number of communications or flows from the uh, from uh, between between the client and the server so uh, but most of our detection methods work without the need of our flowmon probe so I would say that uh, we can detect it with the with the traditional flow data that means that we can basically detect that from the layer three layer four information. And that also means that it's not like um, crippled by encryption. Mm -hmm. Super, thank you. But, uh, but I can I can get the details and and uh, answer in details offline. Mm -hmm. Okay, you get a follow up questions. Uh, is the anomaly detection quick enough to upload uh, update probe filters to perform a packet capture? Can a full automate uh, anomaly be captured, or is Flowmon capture for anomaly information? Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's what we what we do. So I will just uh, I forgot uh, the IP address, so I will just yeah uh, go to the events. I will show you. I will show you how it how it looks like. Um, why, why it is not here? Oh, it's target. I need to filter it as, as, as a source. So we had uh, ICMP anomaly. We had the capture here. Uh, here you can see actually several PCAPs. <clears throat> uh, the first two are uh, captured after the event is detected, but usually uh, what you are asking, uh, de uh, there is some delay, right? Be be between uh, the packets go through the network and uh, uh, the, dete the event is detected. For that, we implemented a rolling buffer. So for each communication, we are storing first a couple of packets. Uh, it can be uh, customized how many packets it would be. And these packets are actually in this third PCAP which contains those history packets that already went through the network and are stored in the buffer. So uh, we can get uh, all the packets, uh, no, not all, but we can get first n packets for that are related to this uh, to this uh, event, and there then there might be some uh, some blank, 
uh, space, and then we have uh, the, uh, another packets in these uh, in these um, uh, pcaps, and it's automatic uh, using the information like even source, even target, what it, what it, what is the protocol, what is the port. This all information are used to create the packet capture uh, in the in the product. Mm -hmm. Super, thank you, Martin. You got another one or last three questions. Uh, in order for the network monitoring to work correctly, correctly, does it require that all of the network switches support and are licensed to forward netflow data? So, generally, yes. Uh, well, it depends. It depends on the uh, on the network infrastructure. Um, you can basically use just flows from the core switch or router, uh, send it to to the the flow mon. Uh, it, it might limit visibility in some cases, but it depends on the network infrastructure. Uh, this is re really discussed uh, with our sales engineers that can, uh, based on the customer needs, they can um, provide the sizing and, uh, and identify the monitoring uh, monitoring points in the in the infrastructure and yeah it can it can based on based on the configuration it depends what mm -hmm. data you will have and if there are some blank spots you can you can use the probes mm -hmm. super uh, second question is uh, can alarm uh, can flow mode alarm when our traffic increases or there is an uh, abnormality could these alarms be limits learned by ai not limits we set uh, so in the monitoring center that is focused on the operational use cases on the flow analysis, there are some alerts. Uh, this is like the demo, uh, demo uh, uh, our demo where I have limited access, but uh, I can define uh, if I have admin access, I have I can define uh, the alerts on multiple conditions. I can also use the flow fields. Uh, uh, in the uh, so so it's for 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 filtering what uh, like data will be uh, will be processed by the alert. So I can use, for example, some specific HTTP information or some information from the DHCP protocol, DNS protocol. Yeah, for example, in this case, uh, I want to know if there are some hosts they are receiving. Uh, they are not receiving network configuration from the DHCP server uh, in my network. So this is something that also can be easily set up here and yeah there are some some values like some averages or some absolute values that you can define this is the monitoring center and in the ads which is uh, which is true, uh, focused on uh, on the security use cases, but the detection methods are basically using uh, adaptive baselining and learning learning what uh, the thresholds are, what the like what what the normal normal values are, and based on this, uh, they then detect the events. So, but it's more for the security. So. Uh, yeah, in the ADS, it's it, it uh, there are methods that learn uh, based, and it's in that case it uh, it, it learns uh, how it looks like in the customer network. So it's uh, customer specific values, let's say. Uh, but in the monitoring center, there are some like either average or absolute value. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so not I'm uh, not not not. Like, like it can be AI, AI can be used, I guess, maybe, but uh, yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thank you, Martin. And uh, last questions: Companies outsource the level one support, and these companies miss the network monitoring. How can I get sup that support as well with Flowmon as NetFlow monitoring? So. I'm not sure if I understand correctly. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But uh, generally, the solution provides you the visibility. So if you outsource your support, then depends who will be managing the Flowmon solution. Yeah, yeah. So there are definitely some 
uh, of our customers that are running uh, security operation centers and work operation centers. Uh, so uh, Flomon is knock and SOC ready. Uh, the, there can be like uh, a system or model where some other company is using Flowmon to monitor monitor their customers' net network for both operational and security use cases. We already have such customers, uh, so maybe mm -hmm. maybe that's that. Uh, regarding some uh, integrations with ticketing systems, uh, there are general general options how to integrate Flowmon with third party third party systems, not just ticketing, but it can be CM, it can be network access control, it can be firewall. Uh, there are some, yeah, so we have those capabilities how, how to generally integrate. So that might also help with with the question. We can we can follow up offline. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Uh, well that was all of them. So thank you Martin very much. And we've arrived at the end of our webinar. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, I hope you find all of this information useful. If you require any follow-up information, do not hesitate to contact us either through our website or uh, well, mainly through our websites, where you can also find another useful information about our solution. And we'll be looking forward for our next webinars, probably next year. So thank you very much. and. Have a good day. Thank you for your attention. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.